Cuba, it's me, episode 19 of The Willow Show, which stands for Wrestling is Life, Life is Wrestling. Now, on today's show, I want to talk about the rise of Ty Dillinger. I knew him since he first broke out in the business. A couple of people have been putting comments about they remember some of the matches I had with him. Everybody's so happy for him. What a true professional. And I want to talk a little bit about the early years of Ty Dillinger. Now, when he first came and uh, we did some training together and whatnot, the man picked up on it so fast. He was such a great athlete. He had natural charisma. I was always so jealous and blown away by him. We had like so many practice matches. We used to do these fake Sunday practice shows, and me and him had some outstanding matches. I still have this one two out of three falls match we did where Eddie Osborne was the commentator. I still have it on tape. And uh, it was really good for back in the time for both of us. Never even I had I think I wrestled like two shows by then, and then we did this show in uh, Woodstock, Ontario, and I wrestled Rory McAllister in the opening contest. And Ty was just the cameraman for the event, and he was so upset. Like he like he had a good time and everything, but he wanted to wrestle so bad. And the next time we went to Woodstock, Ontario, it was myself and Lars Phoenix versus the Highlanders in the main event. And uh, Ty Dillinger wrestled his first match on the show against freak show Macy Lucas. And I remember being the mark I was, going up to Robbie McAllister and saying, we had the best match, didn't we, didn't we? Because, of course, I just wanted to have the best match. And he was like, not even close, man. The match between Ty and freak show was the best match on the card. And that was the first match he ever did on a show. And he was just so good. And uh, so eventually, we got a place together. Me, him, Eddie Osborne, and the 21st Century Fox. We got this two-bedroom place that we rented out. And so the Fox and Eddie Osborne had the one bedroom. And me and Ty shared the other bedroom. Whoever had their girlfriend over that night got the bedroom. The other one would sleep on the couch. And uh, he used to be this bouncer at this nightclub for a job and whatnot. And uh, so I would go and get a ride home from one of the other guys that worked there too. And... We would have great talks. We both wanted to be like the best ever. I had so many creative ideas. He had so many. We just loved talking about different spots and whatnot. So fast forward a couple years, PWA started up and um, 2005. And I remember on the very second show, I wrestled Ty in a match. I have that one on VCR too. I might try and upload it. I don't want to be a mark, but I might try and upload it. It's a pretty good match. It got a lot of uh, votes for Ontario Match of the Year that year. I don't think it won, but everyone said it was great. But in that match, there was a spot early on where um, I went for a Tornado DDT, but he placed me on the ropes and he came off for a big boot. But I fell because I lost my balance, and I fell back and hit my head on the corner of one of those metal chairs. Like, you know the ones that have metal like this and then a cushion here? And I literally got knocked out. I remember seeing yellow. Everything was yellow. And I was bleeding. And he kept asking me, like, are you okay? And I was just like, keep going, keep going. But I don't remember any of that match. And there was a monitor in the back from that. And I remember coming back and everyone clapping for me. And Rory McAllister, like, stitching me up and being so concerned. And then I had to go for stitches. And he carried me through this match, literally, like... He just, I don't even remember. The only thing that really sticks out to me is during that match, um, they wanted to play a rib on Ty. So they asked me, like, is there any chance we could play this rib on him? So this one point, he had me in a rest hold, and out comes Fellatio chasing Rory McAllister with his skirt down around his ankles or something like that. Or no, it was Phil's pants, and he was chasing Rory McAllister. And Ty, being the true professional he is, didn't even break character, but I could tell inside he was just laughing so hard. And then we did a rematch in 2006 in Brantford, which I felt personally, I wish I had this one on tape, I felt personally that match was better than the Cambridge one, but um, I made one little tiny mistake. And back then I was such a perfectionist, I was so hard on myself for that. But now looking back, I think that match was better. And then, of course... Going up to about 2007, he got signed to FCW. And I remember it was like a couple days before he was going to move down there to start training with them. Um, He wrestled two shows. He wrestled a show earlier in the day, and he fought Notorious TID. 
And he came and told us, he was like on the opening contest, so he'd come to Niagara Falls to make the other show. And he said he loved that match. It was so good. And uh, I remember talking to him, how excited he was to go to go with the, the developmental, and he was going to make it to the Fed, and he truly deserved it. This is, ba this is like 10 years ago, guys. And okay, so then, in the Niagara Falls show, he worked Cody Diener in the main event. And they did this thing in the match where... He went for like a vault over Diener and he landed and he like blew out his knee and everybody, all the boys in the back were like so, I still have this match on tape by the way too. I think I wrestled Jeff Black on the show. No, it was Quinson Valentino and Lars Phoenix. I still have that on tape too. And uh, he blew out his knee and Diener worked his knee the whole time and we were all so sad because they did the match so well. That we thought he was really injured and that he wouldn't be able to go to developmental. And all the boys were like so sad for him and everything. And the match was fantastic. And it was just so great. I remember when we got that house that we lived in. Um, the two bedroom. We, we, um, he, I was working night shift because I was saving up to buy a house. And I finally got like this good job. I had done like 50 temp jobs. Just enough to keep me going so I could wrestle on the weekends. And, um. He was doing the bouncer gimmick, but I got this night job working at this rubber factory, and it was Sunday to Thursday, no, it was mo Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 10-hour shifts, four nights a week, and it was great because I had Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, and but I didn't get to train during the evenings, and he started going to WrestlePlex with Eric Young, and he's like, you should come there, man, like, their training is unbelievable, like, He's like, they're taking me to the next level. And I, to this day, I still kick myself that I never went because Eric Young and those guys really put him where he needed to be. Like, he had all the tools, but they, like, equipped him with the knowledge and what to do with those tools. And uh, I still am jealous. I'm like, I should have just done it. I should have just screwed the job and screwed buying the house. But, hey, you live and you learn. I don't want to have regrets. I don't want to be a regret guy. So I just look at the positive stuff. And I just remember he was like, he just couldn't stop talking about the school. And we used to go down and do shows in the States. And um, he was just like so much better than the, the wrestlers in the States and some of the feds that we worked for. Like he had the look, he had the charisma, and like he used to do a lot of cool moves. I remember this one move I wish he would still use. He would do a front leapfrog and then a back leapfrog and do the left spin kick because he's a lefty, right? Like he kicks and punches with his left hand. I think that really helps make him unique. And he used to do the DVD a lot too. But I honestly feel the only criticism I have is I don't like his finisher that much. It's kind of like the Cena thing, but then onto the knee. And like, is he going to be able to do that? Like if he wrestles Braun Strowman, he can't do that. I think Ty should come up with a move kind of like Sami Zayn's corner kick something he could do to everybody but i'm just so happy for him what a great debut the royal rumble was amazing when he came out he deserved it i hope they give him the push he deserves and not just let him fizzle out because if you just strap a rocket to this guy all he's always been a ladies man like all the ladies always went ape over him and uh i bet you anything he's gonna sell so many shirts he's gonna have so he's gonna be like just Justin Bieber, like he's gonna be a heartthrob. So I just want to say, Ty, congratulations, man. I just wanted to give people a glimpse of like how long you've been doing this and some of my memories of seeing you. I just remember all these practice matches we would do, and everyone would say like those matches were phenomenal, but we would do them for like two people. Like we would get some people off the street to come and watch. So anyway, that's a little look. A small little glimpse into the beginning of Ty Dillinger's career. I was just blessed to be a tiny, small part of it. He was always so gracious to me. He always wanted to do the moves that I wanted to do. And I'll always be thankful for him for that. Now, this has been episode 19 of The Willu Show, which stands for Wrestling is Life, Life is Wrestling. Make sure, like, or you get a leg drop. Comment or you get a clothesline. Tell me your favorite Ty Dillinger memories of him coming up in Ontario and blowing everybody away. No one ever has anything bad to say about him that I have ever recalled. And subscribe or you get a suplex. I'm Elian Habanero. I love wrestling. It's right on my arm. Cuba!